Ted Youth. Uh, I'm here to speak to you about barbecue, about barbecue and geography, barbecue and tradition, barbecue and identity. But it's going to be a very technical talk. And before I go any further, I need to get some sense of whether or not you have any expertise in the terms I'm going to be using in the context of this talk. I'm going to flash some terms, on, I'm going to flash some pictures on the, stage, on the screen. If you know what they are, just yell them out. Don't wait for me to, to call on you, just yell out. That will get some gauge of whether or not you have much knowledge before we begin this discussion. You might know what that is. Cow. What about that? Yeah. What about that? You're ahead of yourself. Three. What about that? Oh. All right. What about fat? Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I don't think we have consensus here. I think, therefore, that should be our point of beginning. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a map of the vinegar sauce states of America. See, what happens is that the United States, as you know, started off with some folks who were already here. Then some people who hadn't been here before from Africa and Europe came over. Then some other people came over from either further away. And the whole history of this country has been an attempt to figure out how to take all of these various people and create one kind of culture among them. You know that Latin term, e pluribus unum, out of many one? That's been a big part of what we've been attempting to do in the United States and our culture in general, and also in terms of our barbecue culture. Now, one of the problems with this whole conception is that a few years ago, it, people did a poll and they realized that the most popular condiment in America was salsa. Well, salsa comes from Mexico, which raises the question of why that border is even there. Because the idea of a border, of course, is you draw a little line here. Everything inside of this space is the same. Everything outside of that space is different. But why is it that the number one condiment in America comes from what is arguably another country? Let's bring it a little closer to home. In East Texas, they listen to more Zydeco than they do in North Louisiana. So why is that border there? In the context of barbecue, we've arrived at a kind of national notion of what barbecue is supposed to be. Barbecue is usually ribs. It's usually with a sweet ketchupy sauce. And you can go anywhere in the country. You can go to any grocery store anywhere. And you'll find this is what people think barbecue is. But that is not always the case. In Texas, well, Barbecue, most importantly, we need to realize there's some things that are not a part of this discussion. I know there's some vegetarians here, but tofu is not barbecue. <laughs> Carrots are not barbecue. Corn is not barbecue. And even though we got a whole lot of places serving chicken, chicken is not barbecue. <laughs> what we're talking about here is meat, beef or pork, cooked slowly over wood with more smoke than fire. And usually in the United States, they put a little sauce on it. But after having arrived at what barbecue is, we'll find that it changes depending on where you are. If you know nothing else about Texas, you know the symbol of Texas is the cow, or as they like to call it, the longhorn. And in Texas, barbecue is usually beef brisket, sliced, served, of course, on a bun, and often served with coleslaw. The problem is that if you go to South Texas, they serve something very different. They call it barbacoa, and it's not the brisket at all. It's actually the meat of the cow's head being barbecued underground slowly. They don't even serve it on a bun. They serve it on a tortilla. And they don't serve it with regular barbecue sauce. They serve it with salsa, that condiment that is now the number one condiment in America. What about in the Zydeco country part of Texas? That is close to the Louisiana border. And of course, their barbecue is a lot more like the barbecue that you're used to in Louisiana. You get pork barbecue, ribs, which is a kind of national standard of what we've come to think of as barbecue. Now, even if Texans can't make up their mind about whether or not barbecue is supposed to be beef, whether it's supposed to be pork, the people in South Carolina, in the Palmetto State, they don't have any problem with that. Barbecue is pork for them, no question about it. And in addition to the fact that it's so crucial in South Carolina, 
it's also throughout the whole region of the southeast, throughout all the places that we referred to a few minutes ago as the vinegar sauce states of America. Now, South Carolina claims that they actually invented barbecue, so they got all the different kinds of sauce conceptions available to them. The ones made with vinegar, the ones made with ketchup, the ones made with mustard. Usually, they serve it on a sandwich of pork. Of course, this might look a lot like the beef brisket sandwich we saw a little while ago in Texas, but I don't tell them that. It's a big rivalry between the two. It's not supposed to be the same at all. But what we found is that these traditions move with the people. So, the Texas barbecue tradition of barbecued cows has moved through the Midwest. And also, you find that people from the Southeast moved in the great black migrations to the cities of Los Angeles and Oakland and Detroit and Chicago, bringing barbecue to those places. And that's where we got this national conception that was so different from what people were eating at home. What happens then is you have all of these big companies saying that this is what barbecue is supposed to be. What you'd normally assume is that it's a David and Goliath kind of battle. And all these little things, all these vinegar sauce states, all these mustard sauce states, all of them would go away. But that's not exactly what happened. In fact, the opposite happens. If you go to San Francisco these days, you can go to a place called Memphis Minis, and you can get barbecue sauces from all these regions, mustard sauces, vinegar sauces, ketchup sauces. You go to New York, once again, a long way away from vinegar sauce country. You got all of these kind of traditions happening side by side. So what we end up with is not what we thought we wanted, not this notion of e pluribus unum out of many, one. It's more like e pluribus pluribus out of many, many. Thank you. <laughs>